The Story of Fenrir Part 1 Fenrir is the great wolf in Norse mythology who breaks free from his chains at Ragnarok. The twilight of the gods kills Odin and is then killed by Odin's son Vidar. Fenrir is the son of the trickster god Loki and brother of the world serpent Jormungandr and the Jotunheil. He is also known as the Fenris Wolf, also given as Fenris Wolf and Van Argan Monster, Van usually understood to mean creature of expectation, because he was prophesied to participate in the destruction of the gods. He was born of the union of Loki and the Jontas Angerboda. A prophecy foretold that the children of Loki would cause the gods of Asgard trouble, and so they were taken from Jotunheim, land of the giants where they lived with their mother, and brought to Asgard. Odin then hurled Jormungandr into the sea, dropped Hel into the depths of the realm of Niflheim, and eventually had Fenrir chained to a rock. All three children would avenge themselves at Ragnarok. The story of Fenrir, like all of Norse mythology, survives today through a Christianized lens and it is difficult to tell what aspects of the tales were original Norse beliefs and what are later interpretations. Although Fenrir is understood as an antagonist of the gods and one of the villains of the story of Ragnarok, the original story makes clear that Odin's and the other gods' treatment of the great wolf contributed to his siding with the forces of chaos against them. The World of the Myth Before the beginning of time, there was only the world tree Drasil and the misty void of Jinnengagat bordered on one side by the fiery realm of Muspelheim and on the other by the ice world of Niflheim. The fires of Muspelheim eventually began melting the ice of Niflheim and the giant Ymir emerged along with Odhumla the cow. Odhumla licked the ice for sustenance and revealed Buri who then mated with the jaundice Bestla. Bestla gave birth to Odin, Vili, and V, the first of the gods, while Ymir, through self-fertilization, birthed the giants. Odin, Vili, and the attacked and killed Ymir whose gushing blood drowned all the other giants except for Burglemir and his wife, who fled on a raft and would generate more giants who would swear eternal enmity with the gods of Asgard. From Ymir's body, Odin and his brothers created the world of the Nine Realms. Asgard, a realm of the Esir, joined to Midgard by the Rainbow Bridge Bifrost. Alfheim, realm of the Elves. Hal, a realm of those who died of illness or old age and then of most people. Jotunheim, a realm of the giants and frost giants. Midgard, a realm of the humans between Asgard and Jotunheim. Muspelheim, a realm of fire, the fire giant Surtur and Surtur's forces of chaos. Nidavellar, Svartalfheim, a realm of the dwarves beneath the earth. Niflheim, a realm of ice, snow, and mist near Muspelheim. Vanaheim, realm of the Vanir. They then created the first men ask and woman Embla from an ash and elm tree, respectively, and reigned the realm of Midgard with a high wall to protect the helpless creatures from the giants. After humans were created, the gods made animals and then Bifrost, the rainbow bridge, which joined Midgard to Asgard. The Nine Realms would exist until the day of Ragnarok when all would be destroyed in a great battle. Between the gods, the forces of order, and those of chaos which included the god Loki and his children. Fenrir's character and name. Although in the present day Loki is often represented as a personification of evil, he is never depicted that way in the original Norse tales. Loki is a trickster god who upsets the established order, but these types of deities or spirits, in any culture, encourage change and transformation. Loki, therefore, is not evil. He is only a serious bother to gods and humanity by introducing the unexpected and almost always unwelcome or even tragic to the ordered worlds. Like and follow to see part two.